Welcome back, everybody. It is uh, part two of uh, opening the rift, uh, getting rifted. Uh, the the bag of unused bits is getting bigger. Just kind of set up an area here for stuff that isn't being used. Uh, the the transmission looks exactly the same, except I uh, I did attach this, and I have been fiddling with the electronics, and I think uh, so long as it proves that there is aft clearance i can get this guy in right here and he should work with a uh super glued up horn like the height looks good it's all just about this clearance i don't i don't know what's back here this is the back front front is that the front or the back see i don't read ahead so i don't even know so uh i haven't gone ahead and made that adapter plate yet because I don't know if it'll fit. Uh, worst case scenario, I have I have that guy, and uh, if the two speed, this is Daphne's future two speed. Uh, when it goes in there, I don't need that because she already has an eco power for her two speed. So I have a spare micro if it comes down to it, and it's a. 25 spline, which is what I have glued up here, so that will work. I would like to use that, but I don't know about fitment yet. We are on to bag E. I kind of left this bagged up because I just wanted, like, I appre- Okay, I appreciate it. There's bag E, and then it's, it's pretty foolproof, yes? One, two. But then you, you start to feel like you've gone insane. Because there's no, there's no E3 or E4. We just go 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8. So on one hand, I appreciate everything being individually bagged. On the other hand, this, this is just, this is just where we're at so far. I, I mean, I'm not out in the woods hugging trees. But at the same time, man, that's a lot of plastic. Uh, this amount of plastic is like a, uh, this is a statement in support of RTRs. Uh, I thought the Vanquish, when I built the Phoenix, had a lot of plastic bags. But this, this is a lot of, because like, then, within the E5 plastic bag, those balls are in a plastic bag these little whatever these little things are, are in a plastic bag pretty much everything is in its own little plastic bag uh we are at a step that i don't i don't i don't record any of this uh building shocks is 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 unpleasant uh and oh this won't actually be that unpleasant uh we've got big boy style shocks so the pistons are retained by lock nuts and not eclipse and it's early in the day but uh that's the best thing that's happened to me today so these things should essentially fly together as i don't have to fight with an eclipse tool now, let's see what's that look like pretty light and it's in a bag so let's Actually, let's, uh, oh, look how it's shiny. Let's, uh, let's cut these open and, uh, just to establish an idea of the sheer amount of plastics. So, like, see, here's, I won't even cut open the tiny bags. Because there's this and those. Uh, this is thankfully this is a step I don't essentially even need instructions for. If you've built a shock, you've you've effectively you've you've built a shock. So there's not a lot here to be said. I uh, I prefer a coated body. These appear to be uncoated. Uh, they uh, they might be clear anodized. Uh, what what will tell over time is uh when you drain the shock oil out to change the shock oil uh how silver is it 
you know, how much does it look like liquid mercury will uh, tell you, which is, for me, the biggest selling point of coated body shocks. Um, shouldn't be too hard to tell the front and rear springs apart. That is a, that's a spring. So, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten little bags, 12 little bags plus these. So we're talking 25 little plastic bags just, just for these. Uh, hopefully it will probably take me just a few minutes to put these together. And as I say, when I go kit, it looks a little light to me. Um, they are two whole pistons all the way around, but, uh, we'll see how they go together. And the only real note I generally have after assembling a shock and I see bleeders screw holes, uh, is how hard are they to bleed and get full and if they have bleeder holes, uh, they will not be difficult. I am interested in this, I guess, these maybe uh, external travel limiters. Either way, uh, I'll let you know how I feel about them once they're put together. Popping in quickly to present today's episode within an episode, which we call Axial. Why would you do this? Here are the, the two-piece uh, shock caps. Let me see if I grabbed the two correct ones. Okay, those are the same size. But if you'll see there, I can't, I honestly, I have to set them on a flat bench and measure them. One is 53 and a half millimeters tall. The other one is 59 and a half millimeters tall. Axial, why, why, why would you do that? Uh, like, they look identical. Uh, I have to set them just by glancing. Can you tell which one is which? The taller ones are on the outside and the shorter ones are on the inside. Would that make a difference in the installation on the vehicle? Because the shock bodies have the same threads at the top. So that shouldn't make a difference, but why, like, why aren't those all the same? Uh, and also while we're at it, uh, there is the rod end of a rear and there is the rod end of a front. So the rears use the little shorties, uh, top and bottom and the fronts use the longs top and bottom. So it's not a problem but it is more manual consultation than I generally have to do to assemble some shocks. They are all, like, everything's just a little bit different. Oh, one last mention. I don't think this is wholly necessary. There is the bleeder screw, complete with its microscopic silicone O-ring. Uh, in all the screw bleeder shocks I've built, I mean, I've seen a couple use Teflon washers, use a couple different methods. I can't recall ever seeing one use a little baby silicone O-ring. It's going to be super fun. Anyway. All right, those those three went together uh, pretty straightforward. So, you know what? We, we will do one. Uh, oh. So... Uh, Notably, they don't use a spacer or ring between the two seals. Uh, a lot of shocks do. What you do is you, you only just put that on like a thread and a half. Uh, I, I, I was an associated uh, green slime guy. Uh, I still am, but I'm out. So shock oil kind of performs the same function. So we don't, we do not assemble dry. Put a little bit of shock oil on the seals. Put a little bit of shock oil on the shaft. Squeaky, squeaky. I like to do the bottom end before I start filling it. I pre-tap my rod ends because uh, it's just easier. 
you know you don't have to you don't have to fight them together and then you turn until it just starts to the when the shaft just starts to slip in the pliers that's where I stop I push the piston up to about halfway give or take fill it to the top pull it down in one shot so we try to get just one big poppy bubble let's see how close the other three are full so let's see how close axial got to the edit here I kind of go just below the level of the rim and pretty good there's one so yeah if you get lucky and you get just that one bubble popping You don't have to deal with all the little micro bubbles. Uh, I realize I have to take this shock apart. I forgot to put that on. We'll do that. I'll do that on my own. So as there are no bubbles and, oh, wait, no, there, there they come. There they come. You just try not to pull them below the piston. You can speed the bubble removal up with a heat gun but uh i don't know i think i'll just wait as the shock that i attempted to s assemble uh on camera was the bubbliest one uh, i took the opportunity to put the little little bumper on we get a little once again we do we we don't we don't go in dry just a little bit on that o-ring Bleeder screws are great. Definitely preferred to bladders. Uh, you might want to put a wrench on that if you are a normal human. I have uh, the ability to crank things down so tight that I myself cannot remove them after I am done. So, get our little precautionary paper towel here and it shouldn't be too bubbly so we should only start to get oh nope it's underfilled this, see this is why I... this is why I don't do this on camera I got the last one perfect and now this one is going to be an absolute casserole. But we're already here. Let's see if I can get... There we go. See, no big air bubble poofed out at first, which is how I want it. I just kind of cycle slow. Make sure... There's Mr. Crow. He likes to go up into the pine tree above my workshop. And he throws stuff at the building. Uh, he's got a really gimpy leg. And uh, the young crows, they beat up on him. So, I mean, I can understand. I've got a bad back, and if I was a crow, I think the younger crows would beat up on me. Spring. Cup. I do like... I mean, if it's not a clamping cup, you heard that click. There's a ring in the rod end. I like that. I like a nice high shelf for the spring. And look at that. So there they are. They went together pretty nicely. I have to say, at least of the things I've built recently, that's the longest shock I've put in anything. That is a... 155 yeah that is a 155 millimeter shock and the fronts are looks like 140 give or take oh also of note and i will uh i will slap this down here uh e1 through e8 one two three four five six seven eight uh at no point 
did they ever tell me to put oil in the shocks? Uh, the only times they mention oil at all... Um, yeah, uh, they want some oil on the, uh, the O-ring right there for where the O-ring land goes. Um, they didn't even tell me to oil, to pre-oil the things. So, uh, yeah, I mean, oil's optional, I guess. Uh, and as far as we're going to give you as little as we possibly can goes, that's, that's cutting it pretty close to the edit. That would not fill, that would not fill one more shock body. So kudos Axial, you saved yourself a nickel. Uh, now, uh, moving on to F bag, which is, well, the first F bag, which is this one. Uh, and once I start getting into the next F bag, F2, uh, I will find out about my servo fitment, which is kind of what's hanging up in the air for me right now. I am officially into the mess of F bags, uh, to build the body. Uh, there is the huge interior. Uh, I'm assuming here in the same bag. Yeah, this is the whole... <laughs> that is the entirety of the body panels for a rift. So there is not a lot there. And uh, there is the entirety of the sticker sheet for a rift. Uh, I don't know how much, if any, of that I will employ. Uh, and then here are the most, like... I don't... I don't care how you paint those. I don't know if I can think of a more boring thing. Uh, so I think what is going to happen is I might have to cut one of these heads up. Uh, the co-driver might still be one of those. I hope not. But I have definitely picked my driver. Uh, I just need to... Uh, yeah, see, that's why I might cut a head up because she would be looking down too much. We need a more... We need a more forward look. But again, uh, I'm not going to bother to screw any of that down because I have to check to make sure. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how close the roof is. I, I desperately want this cat head in there. I, I, I feel like I need it. Uh, it is from one of those little solar rockers, uh, like the little mariachi guys. I have, I have like, dozens of them it was a thing where uh once people find out that you like something uh they start bringing them to you uh those are just the ones that i could reach i have a uh i have a pope he's got the little hand wave uh i've got probably 80 more of those things and uh, I don't know if it was during wind or something moved or something, but uh, the poor the kitty fell, and the whole the whole bottom of her shattered into pieces. So I managed to uh, salvage her broken head, and hopefully her head can uh, get into this rift. That is that is my genuine hope. But uh, I'm only on F three. So, I got a good ways to go. This guy is clearly designed for some some big battery action. A, uh, a 3S hard pack goes right in there. They also give you a bunch of little, you can see there's all these recesses uh, to put these little stopper fellas in there. And you can pretty much size it to run whatever pack you want in whatever position you want which is nice uh all of my big packs are on the damn ic5 ec5s uh my little guys are on xt60s the speed control is on an xt60 so i think for the testing purposes we'll be on an xt60 and i, I i'll i'll be able to tell like uh when a can when a connector is overdrawing really bad it, get, it gets pretty hot so, uh, the, soldering one of those up to the speed control won't be a huge issue. Where I would like to raise a small point of uh, gripe here 
is we've got two, four, six, seven screws in the front end. You would think, bish bosh, throw it together, right? One 18 millimeter, three 14 millimeter, two 16 millimeter. The one down here was a uh, one 16, so a 12. So this guy down here in the bottom that's already in place is actually a 12. So 12, 18, I think it goes like 14, 16. Look, look, this is a legitimate beef. Like, I, I am comfortable making this gripe. There is no reason under the sun these all shouldn't just be one length. 16s, 18s, whatever. Just make them all the same length. Why, why would you do that to anyone? It looks like there's the same amount of, of strut pretty much everywhere, but obviously somewhere an engineer picked that specific length of fastener for a reason. So I don't want to accidentally put a 16 in the 14 hole. So it takes a lot, lot longer than it should. And it makes me irrationally angry. This is the RC assembly equivalent of those people that don't close the gap in the drive through What is wrong with those people? What is wrong with these people? I present to you an 80% completed cage. This is this is kind of nifty. Uh, directly from the nightmare dimension. Uh, they want this installed before you put the other half of the cage on, which would mean it's a semi-permanent thing. Uh, I did not do that because I, uh, I got it test fit like that. I grabbed our friend Kitty Head, and if I can fumble this into place, like it just, like, she, she could kind of fit like that until the first time it rolls over. Although, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, I kind of, I kind of like that. Uh, but she barely fits. Maybe a little heat, push the neck down to try to get her, to, to get her head flat in because uh, I think end of the day if I can't get the kitty head in there uh, I, I'm just not gonna run that at all like like what's the point that brings you to uh, the, the the locality uh, from where this comes uh, you assemble the left hand side first so the little pieces go on independently and then once they're all on it's just all the way down to put this side on Four 14 millimeter, two 16 millimeter, three 18 millimeter, two 25 millimeter, and one 30 millimeter. And then follow those dotted lines. Like particularly this right here. Which one goes in that hole and which one goes in that hole? Because they're different. One's a 14 and one's a 16. I, I, I develop a, a, a hate for the people and entities responsible for stuff like that. It was basically one fastener at a time. Try to identify where that hole is on the diagram. Try to pick the correct length of screw. Put that screw in. Move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Absurd. There are 6, 9, 11, 12 fasteners on this side. And there are 5 different sizes. It should be three at the most, at the abs. Oh, and that doesn't count that, which went in, in an earlier step, which would be six different sizes. So on this side of this cage, we have 12, 14, 16, 18, 25, and 30. That's, that's madness. So that's, that's where I am till right now. Uh, it's getting very close. We are at F11, which is rear sway bar. And after that, drive shafts, which is G1, the wild boars. And then after that, we put this thing together. 
Like there's a possibility it could even move. Let's let's not get ahead of ourselves. All right, all right. The uh, sway bar uh, is is super simple. Uh, I like that the ends of the bar are actually threaded. They thread into these pieces. That's nice. Uh, it does say in the instructions installation for optional sway bar. Uh, the shocks are like five inches long on trailing arms. I hope you're going to put a sway bar on it. Uh, drive shafts, similarly simple. They go together like every other axial. Very simple. Uh, two short pieces for the front, two long pieces for the back. Those are done. I, while thinking about it during my luncheon, uh, I said, you know what? For now, we will just throw that micro in there. Because I did figure out, I got to the part where this mounts right here. And this is intended to be the receiver box. What I will probably do is put the receiver in the fuel cell and mount this guy right like that. Then make an extension for the shaft, for the shifter, and then just put the horn on there and just run it like that. So in place, either in place of the cover or potentially just cut into the cover and make the cover a servo mount because uh, from a sideways angle, it looks like it would be about right. I mean, worst case scenario, I would have to uh, extend this, make a little taller hat, which I had done on the Capra when it was on a micro servo. Mount this guy up, mount a new, make a little... 2.5 extension, maybe have a, a vertical piece with having it something to come through to, so that it's not trying to deflect too much. Uh, it works fine, but uh, I don't know. I mean, I know the the quick run is a is a very economical speed control, and uh, I feel like that fan, like it goes into a board, but I feel like that fan is just running straight off the battery because this thing. This thing sounds like mad. And uh, sometimes the speed will go actually go up even higher than it is right there. So uh, I, I had assumed that this thing was going to be a clatter fest due to all the metal. And uh, it is. That's low. So the little Traxxas guy, he does he does great. Like, there's enough load on that fork that if you shift it not moving, like it, it won't push in, it'll it'll drop in. But like look how short that throw is. High speed does sound very smooth. That is a lot of metal on metal. Uh, that is also a very noisy thing. So, I believe I am up to step G2, which involves putting the links and drive shaft on the front axle. Then G3 is putting the link and the, the links trailing arms and drive shaft on the rear axle. Then G4 and 5 are mounting them to the plate. So we're get, we're getting we're getting close. It's getting close. It's pretty straightforward to get axles uh, hooked up to a skid. Uh, it's actually surprisingly smooth. Like okay, that's just straight cogging. Yeah, that, uh, I, I, I've never been impressed by a Spectrum motor of any kind, really. I mean, it, at higher speeds, it's fine. That's low gear. And, uh, the, 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 you know what? Oh, my God. The real downside to what we got going here is you can hear 
I think that's the micro servo. Yeah. It can't, it can't handle it. Uh, okay, there's high. And it won't, like, see, it won't hold it. Like the torque, you can watch it pull back in. Okay, watch. <laughs> so, I, I don't know if I already broke a tooth off of it. Uh, and that is with the end point taken to zero. I can't, I can't trim it out anymore. I would have to pull this off and recenter it again. Uh, a Traxxas micro humming like that is not long for this world. Uh, but I do have a, a mechanically, a, 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 an electronically burned out that still has perfect gears in it. So, but nonetheless, like it will go very quiet. Uh, so uh, this is just for the reinforcement of why I do not like micro servos. This is a great placement of a receiver box, though. I mean, all the wires are just beep, beep. I figure I'm going to... Uh, restrain this guy to over there so he is not on the drive shaft side we are now on g9 which is uh this step right here so i'll get that put on there and in g10 i put shocks on it and uh we can't in this one get to where we put tires on it so uh, I will uh, hopefully get to that in part three, which will be uh, finishing it up and driving it. And, oh, very positive, uh, the colors all match. So orange to orange, blue to blue, yellow to yellow, meaning the motor is in the correct direction of rotation. So I can indeed put a censored motor in there. Which is very good, because I think if this thing is going to do any kind of rock work at all, it's going to need a censored motor. I have a 540 and a 550 of various old ages, and uh, at some point I will pop one in there and see if they work. Uh, it will be interesting here in a moment to see how much work it would be to, say, get that off once this is on it looks relatively clear but uh if it's anything like a capra yeah it's like a capra it's basically detach the shocks take off like eight screws and the cage lifts off it does at this point look like unlike the capra everything is kind of contained on the quote unquote chassis so that removing the cage should actually be reasonably straightforward. But, before we talk about removing the cage, let's put the cage on. And there she sits, mostly ready to run. Uh, you can just see a glimmer of the bead locks off in the distance. And uh, I had uh, cleaned those up and gotten them ready because I'm not a fan of plastic bead locks. But I'm less of a fan now of uh, plastic glue-ons. So, uh, I mean, there's no way I would be using these wheels. We will throw them on right now just to get a look at it in its full glory. I do have uh, the F9 bag with four screws. I never used those. Uh, maybe they put the the body, the, the little insert in? I don't know. Uh, I have G6 with three of those. I never used that. Uh, the only other ones I have are the spares with the battery straps. Haven't needed that yet. And then the, uh, the panels, which I will paint eventually. Uh, looking at... Uh, I didn't even notice... I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention. Uh, it will not fit in the frame. Uh, 
I wasn't paying enough attention to notice that this guy is on big old axles. So these are five millimeter lock nuts. They require the eight millimeter wrench to put them on. And uh, these are flanged, which I guess makes sense going onto a plastic wheel. Uh, but when they do go onto these, you'll note, uh oh, uh, that, those, those don't play together. But that's okay because I own a Phoenix. So I have like 200 of these. So I have the uh, the flangeless, which will just uh, drop right in there. No problem. I have never mounted up a set of TSL boggers. They seem... They don't seem super, super soft. So I feel like they should go... They should go on to the beadlocks, the aluminum beadlocks without you know what let's give a little more sauce uh, w uh without too much issue that that there it is and i realize as it sits right there there's no context so just for maximum factor uh the rift and uh and and the jimney uh it, it actually makes the Jimny look too big because it's too close to the camera. That, that, that's a little better. The, uh, the, uh, the bogger is right, right about the height of the hood. I mean, you know, if you take his body off. Oh, no. Yeah. So, like, these are supposed to be the same, you know, essentially scale. Uh, I would put the rift in there in that... Like one seventh scale, because if we allow it to be classified as one tenth, uh, those rear shocks are uh, six and a half feet long in real life. That's a little big. That does not take up a lot of room. And I, as I mentioned, I don't think I can shift it because I think I've already. Uh, I mean, best case scenario, I just stripped out some of the teeth in the little adapter that I glued together uh, in an effort to to make that servo fit. But uh, you can hear it. You can hear it complaining. We can drown out the complaining by plugging the fan back in, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, I really think for any real purposes, this is going to have to be censored because, yeah... That's in low. There's some cogging. I do have drag brake turned on. But uh, I think with any amount of pep, uh, I think we would just sling the tires off of the unglued plastic wheels. Um, maybe I can, uh, <laughs> can I, can I double that up with something? The Milwaukee Shockwave box. It's got little rubber nibbins on it. There we go. Uh, mm. It. Uh, I, I'm on the other side of the workbench. My workbench is shaped like a U, and uh, that that shakes the whole workbench. I. It also occurs to me, I just plugged these in to get. Wait, no, it should still be calibrated. I'm gonna recalibrate that anyway. Yeah, that's one of those crazy things like that radio, th that this radio and that speed control came out of the same rig. But uh, now with it calibrated, and mind you, still on low. Let's see if I can shift it. <laughs> Not really. There we go. Ooh. So here's, <laughs> we're definitely going to make some high speed passes uh, in the running of this. Uh, here's high. And. <laughs> please let that be the, the shifter. Yes. Okay. 
So the <laughs> I thought I broke it on the bench. Uh, the the Traxxas Micro, <laughs> I, like the the Traxxas. What are they? Twenty sixties, twenty sixty fives. The twenty sixty five is is downright rugged compared to the Spectrum SX one hundred seven. It cannot shift this thing, like it just can't. Uh, when that drag brake hit, it literally popped it all the way out of gear. Can I even get into high? We came down real slow on the throttle there. It's actually, it's kind of shifting pretty good right now. But uh, yeah, there's, there's definitely some stuff to do. Uh, I think I will indeed uh, change the battery connector on that in the interim. Uh, I'm not going to worry about painting the panels or putting in the interior at the moment. Uh, I think it will run like that in there, but uh, I will definitely have to mount these up. I will vent them and mount... Oh, I slung it already. I will definitely mount them up on the beadlocks. I think these tires will work great. I think if this thing was on some ruptures, it would be unstoppable but uh we will we will get there it is gonna run aside from the we'll do a battery change because i think for sure uh it's got the room we might as well go whole hog here yeah the suspension feels really good uh, that weight shock oil feels pretty darn good. Uh, I'm, I'm excited. But again, we come back to digestible pieces. So there it is. It went together pretty quickly, I have to say. I have, I have few complaints outside of the just random and unnecessary application of fasteners of all different sizes uh, i am thinking about just painting the body panels like single color i've got a couple different shades of gray i've got black i could do like like i don't know i still want to try to fit the cat head so uh it, it is a it's a possibility of not painting any panels or anything until i determine whether or not the driver insert will fit with the cat head because if the driver insert does not fit with the cat head, I honestly, I, I don't see the point. I really don't see the point. Uh, it'll be easier to work on, et cetera, et cetera, if it doesn't have it. But, and do I, uh, do I want that kitty in there to drive this thing? So part three, wheeling, uh, part two finished it. Uh, I am definitely going to have to... I mean, there also is the cop-out of I could... I could get a proper micro-servo AGFRC. Was it the 20? AGRC, FRC, AG20, whatever it is. The one that is basically that reefs, repaints to make it a reefs. I could go with that because that receiver... I, I also note now, uh, I said I was just going to put a servo right in that box not 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 going to happen uh not without cutting the battery tray if i was going to run shorty batteries not a problem but i would prefer to just leave it in the configuration where i can run full-size batteries it does not look like there's enough side to side width between the motor and the drive shaft to fit this in cross ways like that once again two speeds i love them but what a problem, you know. So, also, motor length. You could get another 12 millimeters. So you could not fit a, like a 36, 76, like a long, an XXL 5 fit, like a, what, what do they call it? I don't know. It's what's in the laser nut now. 
uh, what what replaced this motor because this is not this is not a smooth motor. It really is not. Uh, I, I would love to go into the bin and find one of those censored 540s and just try plugging it up and see if it runs because it's pretty old. I think it's a 2200 kV, which would be great. Uh, I will definitely take a look at that before. But, again, I want to run it as is. Noisy in the back. Quiet in the front. Noisy in the back. Quiet in the front. Uh... I think it's going to be fun one way or the other. I don't expect the sort of nightmarish performance out of this that I got out of a Wendigo, which I had a Red Cat Wendigo for about five days, and I tried everything under the sun to make that thing handle, and it would not and did not. Uh, I have a lot more hope for this. This thing looks like it'll be pretty fun, and I have numerous different sets of tires I could try on it, if it turns out these aren't the ticket for whatever purpose it goes towards. Uh, I think these will look fine. That's why I was kind of leaning towards maybe just gray, dark gray, ch charcoal on the body panels. Uh, could be whatever. Who knows? We, it, it, it may change completely if I do manage to get that cat to fit in there. So, there it is. It's uh, It's almost ready to rock. Uh, hopefully the servo will hold it in a fixed gear position so I can drive it that way. Uh, I, <laughs> the thought of buying another micro servo is really making me want to just grab the bag of unused parts and just reassemble it as a single speed. But we're not, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Two speeds are fun. Uh, if it doesn't have a 3300 kV axe in it, Two speeds are a lot of fun. So, there you have it. There's opening the rift. Uh, welcome to the rift. Part two. All done. 94% uh, ready to drive. Uh, part three. It will definitely hit some dirt. It will definitely hit some rocks. And uh, we'll see what we can do before something in it breaks. And I think it's going to be that poor, innocent, never harmed anybody Traxxas micro servo that served as the two speed servo in Jolly Green flawlessly for over a year. Uh, and I think it, it will die within the week. So we'll find out together, won't we? Yes. Uh, thanks for sticking with me, everybody. Thanks for watching. Uh, leave a like if you like to comment below. Subscribe if you haven't. And have a fantastic rest of the day, week, month, whatever it may be.